Hello, my name is Greg Niemczuk and I'm a concert pianist and also a piano professor at the University in the south of Poland, the Silesian University in Katowice. And today I have for you the tutorial of how to approach and how to practice wisely the very famous and popular Chopin etude so-called revolutionary etude, opus 10 number 12 in C minor. This etude is probably the, the, the most famous of all Chopin etudes and even the most famous of all Chopin pieces of music, one of the most famous, that's for sure. So because of that, uh, I'm of course aware of it. Um, it is very popular among pianists all over the world. So because of that, um, I want this video to be as thorough as possible. I, during this video, I will give you all of um, my personal uh, ways of practicing and how I approach this attitude, how I practiced it, what helped me. Um, this attitude is with me almost all my adult life. I played it in public more than 200 times, I think. I very often like to play it as an encore. Maybe you know some of my recordings. There are a few recordings of me playing this etude on YouTube already. I also made an uh, analysis of this etude, so you can find it on YouTube. If you haven't watched it yet, I uh, invite you to do it. But now I don't want to uh, waste any time. Let's go to work. This etude is considered by pianists, by concert pianists and, uh, and teachers, and as not that difficult. Are you surprised? Well, pianists think it's not as difficult as other etudes uh, of, of, of Opus 10 or Opus 25. There are much uh, many etudes that are much more uh, demanding technically, pianistically and technically. Uh, do I also think so? In a way, yes. In the, in, the, in the sense that we don't need that much time to master this etude comparing to some other etudes uh, that um, are much more demanding when it comes to the time. I would say much more time consuming. But what I don't agree is that it's easy, easier. And the main difficulty of this etude is actually the, uh, not uh, technique, not the technique of the left hand. The main di difficulty of this etude is to play it as a poem, so musically, to express what Chopin wanted to express. And that makes it very difficult because, you know, all this that Chopin wants to express in this etude is written not in the notes, it is written between the notes. And I will try to explain it um, today and I hope it will be much easier for you to understand and much more clear, I, I would say. Okay, but let's start. So, the, how I would, if, if imagine if I, you are my student, I always like to do it, and then you, you, you come to me and you tell me, okay, professor, uh, I want to play this attitude. I said, okay. So, of course, like I always do with my students, I give them um, the strategy of studying, of learning. Because it's not always like, oh, just learn and come to me and then play for me and I will help you. The strategy of, appro of approach of, of, of the work is extremely important. I would say is 50% of success. So in this attitude, it's very clear when we look at it that the left hand is very demanding and very important. Of course it is. And so the first thing that I do with my students is we only focus on the left hand at the beginning. To master it, um, you have to know the left hand alone from memory. It has to be memorized in the final tempo. You have to be very flexible, it has to be a very good articulation, dynamic, phrasing, because there is a phrasing in the left hand 
and uh, evenness and all the problems of the left hand must be solved by itself without the right. Only then, when the left hand can play it um, in a fast tempo and no problems, then there is a time to study very carefully uh, the right hand. But we do it part by part. So first, we now we focus on the left hand alone and let's start from the beginning. So, the first problem, as of course, if you know the etude, this, this pattern going down. The ways of <clears throat> practice and learning it are very, um, I would say, simple, because of course it's very fast tempo, so to master the articulation, I recommend to use this kind of scratching non legato technique. What we are doing is we are scratching the, the keys, like as if you want to you know there is some dust here and you want to clean it up, take it off with your finger. The finger should touch the key. Every finger should touch the key before you do this scratching. When you do this, then you have the impulse in your finger. That helps in the whole etude. So this exercise goes for all the etude in the left hand from the beginning to the end. It gives your fingers the impulse when you play faster the impulse will stay, every finger will still have this, so you will have a very good articulation. And also you play clean, because you have the finger prepared before you play. But now, if you want to play, if you want to make it faster, you should split this into very short grooves. This is one group. Then this. Those are only two grooves and they are repeating, right? So... And you try to play those one, two, three, four, the four notes as fast as you can. Then you slow down. Okay, when you can play each of this group alone, then you can add and you can connect two groups together if you have problem with this then you have to take out what the problem is usually the problem is for example these notes one two three four five you take them out and you practice them practice by repeating I'm not going to talk about the movement of the wrist, the movement of the hand, because in fact each hand is different. And of course, as maybe you know me already, maybe you know other of my videos, uh, this is absolutely necessary and obvious that we need to have a very relaxed hand, but strong fingers. If you have a relaxed hand, the hand will help you. <laughs> In fact, if you see my hand, there is a little movement of the wrist down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, which helps me to play. But as I said before, each hand is different, so you have to find your own way uh, to play it. Um, but the most important thing is focus on a very, very short part first and then add them for longer. Now, another thing we, I forgot for me, it's obvious, but I'm sure for many of you it's not that obvious, is a very important thing. Whenever you play the thumb, you have to carefully look and see if the other two fingers that are going to play are already prepared for their places, for the keys. So, they are prepared. So, okay, we go on. Prepared. It is, seems easy, but it's not that easy if you don't have control on your fingers. Very often it happened to my students that the, these fingers were not prepared um, to, for keys that they are go were going to play. Then what happens then? We lose the time, the very precious time, because if they are not prepared you have to make an extra movement 
to prepare them. And when you play it very, very fast... <laughs> simply don't have time to do it. So, in slower tempo, prepare the fingers already. Now, when you can play the whole thing fast, be careful of the tension. If you have the tension here, if you feel any tension or pain, just relax your hand, go putting this down, like this. Down. Down. Yes? And then here, the same. Now here we have something else. This is not very, very uh, convenient. For this I, um, I suggest to practice um, a little Hanon exercises in C sharp major because here we have some black keys and white keys. So if you practice, if you can play the left hand fast Hanon exercises in C sharp major, it will be much easier for you to play this. But anyway, here we also have groups of four, as you know, and I suggest and recommend to practice only those two, those groups of four. So, like this. four fingers are prepared. Then all the fingers are prepared. All prepared. Prepared. And loose. Relax. And relax. And relax. And relax. As, as, I, told, as I showed you before. So grouping, grouping and grouping one more time. Okay, this is um, the, the introduction, and now we have the main uh, theme and the, the main, uh, the, 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 the first, let's say, part A. Anyway, this. So what do we have to, um, I mean, what is our goal here? Of course, I think it's obvious, we don't have to talk about it for too, too much. The very, a lot, I mean, very even articulation, a crescendo and diminuendo waves, um, of course, and very, very, I would say, strong and um, a strong sound in a good quality, good quality of sound. So then every finger movement should be very decisive, that's the English name, I think, very, very sharp, fast and sharp, down, fast, down. And now, how, what, of course, you are wondering how to, if, if, if you don't play this attitude yet, or you just want to start, how to um, achieve this fast tempo. Uh, Again, I recommend to do grouping. Let's do the first bar now. And we have how many groups do we have here? And groups are um, places that we can play as a chord. This is a group. So we don't have to change the position of the hand. The first group is the first three notes. And those three notes we can play very fast. So just practice a little bit so that you can. Then you prepare the second group, which is one, two, three, four. Four notes. Yes. Then the third group, we have only three notes. And then we have the fourth group. And the fifth group. So one, two, three, four, and five. That's the approach to this bar, and you can now look how to practice. First, only groups as chords. Why this is so important? Because you have prepared all the fingers. The position of the fingers are prepared. So,
it should be one movement only. One movement. One. One. And all the fingers should know their place. When you can do it, the next step is... And faster. This stops breaks between the groups should be quite long as you can f stop 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 very important thing uh, then what is important here um, probably you wonder if you should try to play legato you can try to play legato but it doesn't really work for me in a very fast tempo. Instead, what I'm doing is I do kind of legato, but I always play the thump. When I go up, I play the thump staccato. And as you can see, I immediately prepare the next group. If I play legato, then the thump is stuck and it's too late for him to get preparation here and it's never even. So, I recommend to um, do also this kind of exercise. Play the four notes ta -ta -ta -ta, extremely fast and even and prepare the next fingers. This is very important. Then the next loop. Then the next one. Now here, focus, we stop on the thumb and we prepare the next fingers. And then that's very very difficult. And prepare all the fingers here. They must be prepared. So only two. Okay. Then the next exercise. Non legato. Every time when you practice this, always do the dynamic. Never practice without the dynamic because this has to go inside your blood. This is very, very important. can play um, these groups that I told you, then you should try to play all the way up and stop and relax. 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 Many times, many times. Even 100 times. Then go down. Down and relax. And relax. And relax. And so on and so on and so on. Now the next challenge. Sorry. This is a challenge for many. This is again the problem of legato. If you if you decide to do it exactly legato, forget of playing it well. Sorry, but that's true. You must play again grouping. So my uh, suggestion for practicing is like this. We group again and we play these groups as chords. First we have two notes, the octave, this is one group, the next group is this one, and then be careful, this is bar number 15, this, the next group is not an octave but it's a, a no, nona, nona, no, I don't know in English, the nine, ninth, ninth I think, yes? Because that's how it's written in the score. So we have octave, this, and that's important. And then the next group, we have to repeat the bass and we have to play again octave and the ninth. Again. Very important exercise. And you try to do it faster.
the next step look octave prepared all the fingers prepared the ninth prepared prepared the ninth prepared 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 this is very important then the next step stop and prepare then so and prepare and then prepared and prepared prepared this is also very important this should help you and now another thing of course we have a lot of pedal here so don't worry if it's not even when you play i mean articulation like this that you i do as you can hear i do staccato it's not a perfect legato of course it's not but when i take the pedal can you hear that of course you cannot hear that and it makes it easy and i promise you all the concert pianists are playing like this it is simply impossible to connect this with your fingers so if your teacher is telling you you have to have a finger legato change the teacher um, now this this is another thing we should hear we, i recommend to think every first note of this 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 and here again grouping depends on the fingering that you play. The group should always start from the thumb. I, my fingers. My fingers is one on G. I forgot. Okay, one on G, one on D, and one on G. So the grouping is like this. And before, as I said, you have to also decide fingering here. And then just think about this. You can practice like this. Two notes at the same time. This will make your brain think faster okay let's go because this video will never end but i hope you're still here and i hope it's very useful for you that's what i really hope and um, because that's why i'm doing this okay then we have the same thing and then we have this okay this is a new difficulty and now we here we have to be very smart the, we have to use, like Chopin was using, his elbow and this kind of movement to make the hand bigger and wider. So this is the central. The central part of this part, this is the third finger. So maybe the good exercise is to play the B flat in the third finger and then play like this. try to do it if you have very small hand you have to use a lot of uh, elbow if you absolutely cannot do it then just do the staccato but keep the third finger as close to the b flat as possible I, or like this then because this is the central part of hand should stay in the keys all the time you can see I do this uh, never try to have the stack uh, hand without movement that's not gonna work so, a little bit move a wrist movement and a little bit elbow movement like this and then this okay let's go to the next one also we have to split this into groups stop prepare stop and then this is my fingering. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one. And again, as I told you, before changing the position, the last note is always staccato. Now you 
tell me it's uneven, and I agree. But if I take the pedal, you don't hear. Sorry. You don't hear, but it's easy to play in tempo. Very easy. If I want to... <laughs> I would never do this. So, staccato. Staccato. Anyway, so again, to make it faster, make faster each group. This is quite hard. You have to think about the third, third, this, this, and then when you can play each group fast, then you glue them together like. Mm. So, and relax, and, then, and so on. Okay, now let's go to this. This is also grouping. For this, we have a Franz Liszt exercise. Do you know it? Or we have this etude. the C sharp minor number four. Um, anyway, the next part is very hard. This. Because we have quite a lot of jumps here. So first of all, again grouping. And now very important thing. This is not that difficult. If you can, if you practice each group separately, next, next, right, then it's okay. Then you can connect them together. But now what to do here? This is very important. We have to practice one, one, two, three, four, four notes, so two notes in the in one bar and two notes in another bar. Two notes in bar 29 and two notes in bar 30, like this. Repeat 100 times. 100 times of this, it takes about 100 seconds. My friends, it's not a lot, but if you repeat this, your hand will know this and then when you play the whole you can play it yes then the next the same thing group group and now this is not very hard because we play the five one five and then the same we practice this and good fingering. This fingering that I have here written is very good. One, one, one. Sorry. So, but here again the jump, right? So again we have to study only the jump. And then... practice these jumps because I forgot for me it's easy but for you maybe not uh, a preparation movement so ti, 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 tam, stop and see if the finger is in the correct position in the correct key and of course try to look at this keyboard at this key at this key before that's very important and then this is also grouping. One group, another, another. So, my idea is try to play fast 
as fast as possible. Uh, don't waste your time to play slow for a long time. First of all, playing slow uh, has a risk of playing wrong movements because in playing slow you do the legato. You can do everything legato, but this is not helpful because you will not use these movements later when you play fast. So when you play slow, or you can, of course, and you should practice slow, but you should use the movements that you are going to use when you play fast. That's very, very important. And then we have... This is again the same thing, my friends, grouping. And now here, like again the same thing. Staccato. Staccato. staccato to prepare the whole group prepared so I think that's helpful and then we have the same thing almost until the end the only thing that we have here is new is maybe this one again we need to cut this into smaller groups this of course I recommend the same thing that before at the same time and then with the accent and now this stop 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 these are the grouping First, never play the whole thing, just practice smaller group. If eight notes is too much for you, practice four notes only. Okay, Whew. we finished the left hand, <laughs> and that's only the left hand. Now the real work starts. Oh, this video is gonna be long uh, because it's not the end. When the left hand can play, then the right hand comes, and the right hand has the the theme, the right hand has the inner message. The right hand has something to say. I would say there's something to scream. If you don't know what this attitude is about, please watch my analysis uh, of this attitude, which I made one year ago. In this analysis, I'm even quoting Chopin's diary from Stuttgart. I'm telling you a little about the history of Poland, about what happened in Chopin's life, because this piece is strictly connected with his life. So it's not the etude. We have to play it as if it's a prelude or a poem, a ballad, whatever you want, but not a technical exercise, not at all. Why this is so important? Because right hand has music and the right hand has something to say that means it cannot be played strictly with the metronome. Because then we cannot express what we want. It's like in the theater that the actor uh, always has some freedom of screaming out what he has to scream when he's uh, angry, uh, when, when there is some drama. There is a lot of drama in this attitude. So I work with the student a lot on the right hand. We, uh, we do um, the music. So of course the beginning before you play the first chord, please take the pedal. Pedal on and then... So then you have a beautiful sound. Then this... This is the, how you practice. And prepare all the three notes without playing. Don't play. Just prepare them. And for, for many weeks, try to play only like this. Stop and... And stop. Never try to play immediately. If you play wrong notes here, you practice wrongly. You have to be smart. Practice only clean, good notes. Okay, let's go to the theme. First thing, we have legato, but it doesn't mean we do the finger legato. Uh, definitely, it doesn't help to achieve a forte sound and especially their good rhythm. Pa -pam, pa -pam. What we do, 
without pedal, we play like this. Pa -pam, pa -pam, pa -pam, pa -pam. Then you have a free. The, the, your right hand is free, and you can just pa -pam. you can play ta -da! you know. Um, ta -pam, pa -pam. When we have pedal, we don't hear that you do it. It's just a beautiful legato. This is forte, but then it's a very difficult thing because this is piano. Very important to do because this is how Chopin wants. He wants to express it like this. He's screaming first and then he's afraid. He's ashamed that he was screaming. So, you know, this is not easy. Uh, how to practice this chord so that it sounds well in piano? Well, we have four notes. Practice each combination of notes first. So, for example, the first two, then the second two, then the third, then one and third, then second and fifth, uh, the second and fourth. Then you can practice three of them. Then three of this. I recommend to practice the whole pattern, the whole uh, the whole motif, like this, for example, or only two notes, or three. When you can play like this, then try to play all four. Again, forte, and again. What is difficult here? A lot of things. The expression. You have to sing. You have to imagine that you are singing this. You are, um, you are talking about emotions. So don't be mechanic. How I always wonder how Chopin felt this inside his head. This is not with the metronome. So this is what we work with of our, my students a lot, and I would like you to work the same thing because you deserve to play this etude very well. You know, this is heroic, this is this is dramatic, and this is very important. Then we have piano sotto voce. And this is the first phrase. Then the next phrase has some tricky moments which I want to help you with. First, here this is very important. To play it well, you need to play this chord, staccato, and immediately prepare the next because the next is fast. Ta -ta. I have big hands, so I play it one, four, and then one, two, three, five. Ta -ta. Ta -ta. You, if you have small head, you have to play with the fifth finger. But still, when you have it prepared, you can just play those two notes fast. You must play those two notes fast. Ta -ta. But don't keep your hand here, because then you will never play it. So like this. A staccato. Yeah. Anyway, we have the pedal, so you don't hear that I played this note staccato. And again, the same thing. Staccato. Well, I play without pedal for you, so that you know what I mean. Staccato. 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 And again, staccato. Staccato. So these legato signs here, they are misleading um, if you treat the score literally, like a scholar. This is not helpful at all. Um, it's very important. And then we sing. And you, you have to do it right hand alone because right hand uh, if you do it together, you are always imprisoned. You always think about 
the difficulty of of putting them together left hand is like a policeman Le right hand has to play uh, even this is completely wrong for this attitude then we have tap piano again as you can see staccato freehand and here this is also very tricky here we have to play together i show you you start this arpeggio earlier so in the previous bar and now here you have right hand take a lot of time Piano, you don't go for the a lot of time. Sometimes I even like to do it very much. This is very important. Now you wonder how to do it hands together. How to do it hands together? Is it even possible to do hands together? Yes, it is. And now the most important part of this video. If you are still here, congratulations because I will reveal for you the kind of secret of how to play this etude musically and uh, to make it sound really astounding. Left hand must not be played with the metronome because then the right hand cannot play. Left hand has to accompany the right hand and has to adjust to the right hand's way of expressing uh, the emotions. What, how to practice that? That's a question. One of the ways that helped me and my students is to play left hand alone, which of course you know because you were practicing it before, and to scream or kind of sing. You don't have to sing exactly the notes, you just can uh, sing the rhythm, but sing the right hand alone. How to do it? To play left hand and sing the right hand. And the right hand, you see, when you sing, you have to express the emotions like you want. So listen I, how I do it. I do it a little slower. Now, what is the effect of this? Now I will play you left hand alone and I will be singing inside myself and now you will hear how uneven the left hand must be. Listen. This is a music which is alive. If we play it with the metronome, it's not music. It's not Chopin. It's simply ugly. For, and for me, but I think it's objective. I think you all agree with me. This is just not good. So the secret of playing it well is just like I told you. First, master the right hand and then adjust the left hand to the right hand. Uh, very often, left hand has to slow down. Like, for example, to have time for that, left hand has to play. Right? Otherwise, it's impossible. So left hand has to be the best accompanying person, like the best pianist who, who accompany uh, the, the, the soloist in the world. The best. Then it's beautiful. Then it's good. Uh, of course, it's very important to practice this also. I, it helps a lot to practice this etude as if it's a nocturne. Playing very slow. With a lot of emotions, a lot of dynamic.
of heart in it. Every single note must be beautiful. Play it well. Play it the way you, it touches you. This is how we do it. And of course, a lot of re relaxation um, in the right hand as well. And this is how, what I think, more, more, more or less what I, what I could say now about this edit. If you play it, if you have problems, you can always write down the comments. You can always write them questions for me. You can always write me a personal email. My email is uh, below in the comment section. I can even uh, try to find the time to listen to you. I do some online, I have some on online students all over the world. Um, and as far as I have time, I enjoy to do it. So just feel free to write to me, uh, stay in touch and tell all of us what your progress is. If you are still here at the end of the video, the video, I think uh, it would be interesting for everybody to share uh, our experience with this masterpiece, which is the revolutionary attitude of our beloved Frederic Chopin. Thank you very much for watching and um, see you in my next videos. With this video, I closed finally um, the whole opus 10 of and then, so now on the internet there are 12 um, videos, tutorials of each of the etudes. Now I will continue with Opus 25. Bye bye.